united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Hi, welcome to United with Christ. My name is Robin Holmes and I'm the associate pastor with Bethel Bible Church and I'm joined here today by my good friend, Pastor Eric Paul. Welcome, Eric. Welcome, Robin. Good to be here. Uh, we've been here all of January and I uh, just got a couple more Wednesdays, I guess, one, one Wednesday to go. And yeah. We've been talking about our Next Step Conference. We've been talking about things like worldview, yeah. what's a healthy church and yeah. the value if you attend the conference you'll pick up some of these things because we've got uh, Gene Getz is our keynote speaker, our yeah. conference primary speaker. We've got breakout sessions, but he's written a book on the measure of a church and it's important to kind of check those marks off as to what, what makes a church healthy. Yeah, so we've been, been <clears throat> talking about for the past couple of weeks, what does it mean to really value the local church? You know, a lot of times we hear phrases like I'm a lone wolf believer or I can do my faith on my own. I don't really need a larger body or a larger community. But when we talk about uh, what it means to be involved in the local church, you know, Christ didn't say walk alone. In fact, in his own ministry, he sent people out in pairs and two in a community right. sense. Right. And when Paul was going about uh, church planting, he always had a team. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and really what, what happens to us, I think, is we get hurt by people in the mm. church and we just label the church at large, and, and then uh, we walk away. And initially we kind of think, well, is something bad going to happen? Because we have this uh, worldview that surrounds us. If we do good, good will happen, and if we do bad, bad will happen. And if nothing disastrous occurs in our life, well, we just kind of drift away. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we, we kind of label the church as being good or bad. A actually, the, the church is neither. We're all broken people yeah. uh, needing the grace of God. And then needing to know how to walk and grow, and then learning how to overcome conflict, mm -hmm. to forgive and be forgiven, and work as a team. Mm -hmm. uh, work as a family, not, yeah. not, not just as a team. And in families, we all know that we have dysfunctional families. There's always, you know, I make the statement, there's Uncle Billy, Billy Bob out there who's kind of a little <laughs> weird. Uh, but, but, you know, uh, there's this other concept. Everyone's normal till you get to know them. Yeah. And, and the difficulty is we, we make allowances for our failures and faults because we know why we didn't do something or didn't show up or, or took this course of action, but we judge the other person's actions. Yeah. And so as we've just finished the Lord's Prayer and we've just finished up certain things like that uh, as a message series, uh, we need to reach out and love and care simply because Christ loved us so much. So wow. our Christian walk becomes a love response to a holy God, and it's not a merit, merit badge for success in the future. Mm. So some of the, the concepts that we've been talking about this for the past couple, couple of weeks now, like, like what is the, the real value of the local church? And I think one of the biggest hindrances is people understanding that the grace that God has given us, we should also uh, give to other people as they hurt us, as they offend us, right. as they say uh, various things. And it shouldn't limit our involvement with them in a community relationship. Right. And, and so we've got to hear this, and, and the Bible is, uh, uh, I, I use the expression littered with, with uh, areas of forgiveness yeah. and uh, mutual respect and things like that. Uh, but what, what happens is when we get hurt, uh, the pain, the emotional pain that we feel, yeah. uh, we just latch on to that and don't let God's word uh, permeate and break through. And when we don't permit that to happen, uh, we just get isolated. And really the only one that gets victory in this is the enemy because yeah. he loves Christians to be isolated and uh, unconnected. Whereas God's uh, view, as, as you examine from Genesis all the way through Revelation, is the family of God working together yeah. in such a way that people see that we are different. Yeah. And so we say that periodically from this book of Todd Wagner's, come and see the difference Jesus has made in our lives. Yeah. And so come and see my small group, my learning community, yeah. 
uh, my uh, faith community. And, and so I trust that this conference, this Next Step Conference, The Value of the Local Church, will raise these values and you'll hear other men and we've got uh, three other pastors, three other local pastors uh, doing breakout sessions. Mm -hmm. We have Cliff Barnes from Horizon Fellowship. Yeah. We have Christian Garola from Mesa Place Church and we've got Joe Williams uh, from Westside Community Church. Now, can I ask you a quick question? Yeah, yeah. Why is it so important that we're partnering with all of the, these other churches? You know, we could easily do this ourselves, but, right. but why do we want to partner with so many churches? You know, we want to, one, promote unity. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> unity and not uniformity. Yeah. We want to promote a kingdom mindset mm. and, and not this idea, if, if, you, if you think with me, at least in the, in the word pictures we have of uh, castles in the fairy tales and they have a moat around the castle. My castle, don't come my here. My castle and I pull up the drawbridge and I'm just going to live within my environment. Mm -hmm. And we've, what we want to do is if we're going to see El Paso change, we need to have a kingdom mindset. Mm. And, and it's not about my people, it's about God's people growing, being equipped and mm. being set free to do the work of the ministry. Yeah. And so uh, what we are trying to do, so we have uh, done this now for two or three years. We have invited local pastors to come and do breakouts and, and speak and do things like that. Uh, it, it just helps us to uh, help people realize that we don't have a moat around right. our, our, our church facilities. Right. I really love this idea of not thriving because of our differences, but thriving because of what unites us. And that's the blood of Christ and the salvation that we have in right, Him right. and the mission that He sent us on, right? To make disciples. And to, to do that, we have to be working together here so people aren't taking that and saying, well, that's something that the enemy can use against you because you two aren't working together. Why do I want to be a part right, of that? Right, right, right. <coughs> you know, in the culture that we live in, and this is why this whole worldview concept is so valuable and important, Robin, because uh, if, if we have a, a secularly influenced worldview, we think about I, me, and myself yeah, first. Yeah, true. And then we orchestrate things around us. But when we have a biblical worldview, it's the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, mm his body of believers, his people, and then me. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and so we're constantly looking to serve. Now, whenever we are serving, it's always inconvenient. Mm. It's inconvenient, it's difficult, and then uh, we think, man, I served these people and they didn't even say thank you. Yeah. Well, are we serving to receive gratitude or, or are we serving because we love God? Because right. uh, scripture tells us for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Right. And, and so if we truly say that Christ is Lord, then our lifestyle should re reflect serving. Now, now, I get it. It's hard, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we all fall into the traps. I do too. Uh, that, man, I served these people and I did this and, and I went out of the way mm -hmm. and, and they didn't even say thank you. Mm -hmm. And we say secretly in our hearts, watch it when they come next time, I'm not going to serve. Mm. And then we transfer and we shift blame uh, to, to the church at large and say, well, if I help them, they're not going to respond well, so I'm not going to help them. Yeah. Th those are non-Christian uh, values. Mm. And so we need smaller mentoring, learning community environments where people can speak into our lives and say what you are doing is not good. Mm. We need, and, and, and so we have to be open to uh, the idea of rebuke, yeah. because Paul writes, all scriptures God be useful for teaching, rebuking mm. and correcting. Yeah. So you rebuke and then you correct so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped and training in righteousness yeah. so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And, and so there's that journey. And, and uh, we live in a culture uh, that, that no one likes correction. Mm -hmm. And we say it's all about me. Yeah. And, and, and the reality of life is that when people correct, they say, well, I'm just going to pick up my toys and uh, drive go down home. the street and, yeah. and uh, <laughs> either go home or uh, I'll go play elsewhere. Yeah. No, no it's true. Now, you said something mm -hmm. very true a couple of minutes ago, and that's time, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so I think the biggest hindrance of people seeing the value in the local church is it's all about my time and when I come to you, you're going to give me what I want. 
uh, otherwise I'm going to go somewhere else and get right, what right, I want because right. it's because my time is valuable. Right, because we always see it from our perspectives and, and you know, there are times when you get invited to things and you can't go and you can't help and you yeah. can't support. And, and, and the receiver kind of gets, sometimes gets upset with you or with us mm -hmm. saying, why didn't you come and why didn't you support? Why? Well, uh, you know, uh, life is happening mm -hmm. uh, and, and we have to give people the benefit of the doubt and yeah. say that they're well-meaning, godly brothers and sisters. So if they didn't come, they didn't support, they didn't help, something must have been happening. Mm. And so we've got to give them the benefit of the doubt. And, and our character increases. And so uh, coming back to the conference, so we're hoping that these ideas get uh, into us as, as we interact with it. Yeah. Because the measure of a church is faith, hope, and love. Mm -hmm. So if you measure a church by faith, hope, and love, and if love is, is the grandest theme, uh, the scarlet thread through scripture, yeah. because of the love of God and he died for us, uh, then we, we have to reflect that. Not when it's convenient mm -hmm. or when it's easy, but actually when it is most difficult. Wow. And, and so, so if, if that becomes the measure, then the next measure is our faith. If you look mm -hmm. at our faith, it's like, well, uh, our faith in God enables us to forgive people. Our faith in God enables us to be good stewards. Yeah. Our faith in God enables us to be consistent when we struggle with our consistency. Mm -hmm. And you and your wife, Rebecca, are doing a breakout session yeah. on the struggle with consistency. Yeah, and these are themes that we're going to be, be talking about, you know. Um, our consistency in God's Word, our consistency in spending time with Him has a flood effect mm -hmm. with everything that we do in our own marriage, with our kids, when we go to work, when we interact with people. Uh, it it flows out. And, and things never happen uh, at the right time. Or in well, isolation. Or in isolation. Yeah. So, for, so for example, as we're, uh, this is real, as we're getting ready for the conference on, on Friday, Saturday, Saturday, uh, your computer crashed. Oh yeah, that thing may or you may know, not turn back on. Th things yeah. just go bad at an inopportune time. So we yeah. can either respond well or we can respond poorly. Mm -hmm. a and uh, we respond well or poorly depending on our trust in the Lord. Yeah. And we, we can throw a fit and say, why now? Yeah. Or we can say, why not now? So we can respond well. Yeah. No, it's, it, it's very true. In a couple of minutes, we'll go to a music video. But mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you one more question before we, we jump to our next topic on the second half. Why do we want to make an investment in the local church? Why do we want to, to put ourselves out there? Why do we want to, to serve people, to be involved in worship and ministry with other people? Uh, you know, uh, my response is something like this. Jesus said, I will build my church. That's fantastic. And, and the Greek word for church is not a building, mm -hmm. it's people. Yeah. And, and the word people is never found in singular mm -hmm. uh, ever. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do that so that people see we are a different people. And it's not about one building or one location. It's about the, the kingdom work that God is doing here on the earth at right. large. Yeah. But that's awesome. Well, guys, stick with us. We'll have a music video for you right now. And when we come back, we'll finish our topic. Thank you. Hi, and welcome back to United with Christ. My name is Robin Holmes, and if you're just joining us, we're talking about our Next Step Conference that's coming up this Saturday, January 25th from 9 to 3. It's $20, all ages, all genders. We would like everybody to come and gain the vision of the value of the local church. Now, we're joined here with Pastor So, Rob, I just want to say that if you yeah. come only on the 20, if you register Early, it's $20. It's $20 if you register early, yes. Otherwise, it's $25, 25 which on includes the day, yeah. a lunch, uh, the conference notebook, yeah. and all of that. It's just you know, to make sure, because we provide lunch, and, and so when we call in that late, the lunch is a little bit more expensive because they haven't cost, had yeah. time. It's yeah. just a cost thing, yeah. so, so we're uh, passing it on. Gene Getz uh, is the speaker. If you yeah. Google Gene and see he's written over 60 books. Yep. Some of his more famous books are Measure of a Man, mm -hmm. Measure of a Church, mm -hmm. Measure of a Woman. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and those are really spectacular uh, books for us to, to look at. There are other books that I've yeah. uh, studied and learned from him. Uh, so he's, he's a godly man mm -hmm. uh, and, and one of uh, heroes of the faith right now. And so uh, you, you'd learn much from him. Yeah. 
So some people might be thinking, well, why do I want to send my, my people to you? Uh, are you trying to get my, my people to come to your church? And the answer to that question is, no, we're not. We just want to put on a conference so that your people can be equipped to make an impact in your church. That is our goal. We don't want to keep anybody or any resources to ourselves. Uh, it's not ours. It's all God's, and that's why we right. do this. You know, a uh, couple of times a year, yep. we go out to the Dallas area mm -hmm. and do conferences. We do a conference called Right Now, yep. and it's, it's very refreshing and encouraging. And then we do another conference called CLC, Christian Leaders Conference at mm -hmm. Watermark Church. But uh, led by Todd Wagner, uh, it's not easy for us to always go 600 miles each way. Yeah. You have to stay in hotels. It's very expensive. So the goal is if we can have an equipping conference in the El Paso area, yeah. then we can facilitate for equipping the body yeah. in the El Paso area. Because our desire is that the El Paso evangelical population shift that uh, more believers grow up, mm. uh, more are mature, discipled, and, and go on. So, uh, you, you know, I, I, I get it. People are saying, well, we can do it well. Why should we come to you? Um, we want to do this together. That's why yeah. we, have, we have partnered with a few other churches. Mm -hmm. and, and, they, and we have showcased their pastors. And uh, really, uh, I'm not even doing any sessions. You're not. You're just standing there. I, I am just the chief cleanup crew guy. Yeah. Uh, and, and you're doing a breakout. We have David Flores doing a break, breakout. They are the two other members from our church. Mm -hmm. We have Dave Buckert uh, doing a breakout. He's the missions pastor of Life Community Church in Nogales. Yeah. Uh, so, so we've got pastors from, from uh, Gene Getz, pastor from uh, the Dallas metro yeah. area, Dave Buckert from Nogales, uh, and, and mm -hmm. like I said, Cliff Barnes, uh, Christian Garola, and Joe Williams. Yeah. So we've got pastors from all these places coming and doing workshops to come and help us grow. Yeah, because it's not about us. It's about the kingdom working t together for the greater glory of God. Right. Yeah, so so some of the topics Talk. that we're going to be touching on are finances in the local church, marriage in the local church, marks of a healthy church, the struggle with consistency, regeneration, recovery ministry. When we were sitting down putting this together, we were praying through what topics do most local churches struggle with that we really want to help them overcome? Right. Now, finances, you start talking about finances and people get real cringy and they go, right, ah, right, don't right. tell me what to do with my money. With my money, yes. Yeah. yes. So I think that'll be a, a very good breakout to go to to get a biblical perspective. Mm -hmm. So it all boils down to, uh, and you, you'll feel like I'm just kind of harping on this, it all boils down to how we see the world. Yeah. And when we say a biblical worldview, the goal is to see the world through the lens of God's word, mm -hmm. to see the world through the lens of Jesus mm -hmm. and, and recognize that, that as, we, as we look at the world, there's a historic lens, there's a cultural lens, and there's a me lens. Mm -hmm. uh, what we want to do is to, to look at the world through the culture of God's word, through the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ mm. and Holy Scripture. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of redefines how we look at all our things, our relationships, mm -hmm. and where we are headed in the future. Right. And, and so when, when we start doing that, it really helps. And so I think uh, stewardship uh, is, is an excellent yeah. breakout. It, it gives us perspective. There are over uh, 2,400 Scripture verses on money yeah. and honoring God first with your with your resources. Because it's so, uh, it can really grab us and make us focus on money right. when it shouldn't be our focus. It shouldn't be our focus, but you know, if, you, if you're living at 100% uh, percent or 103% of your income and putting 3% or 5% on your credit card, mm -hmm. uh, how can you give to God? It's true. Uh, I, you know, then we start thinking, man, I've got a 15% uh, debt ratio every month. Mm -hmm. So the idea from there, it is thinking in terms of regeneration and thinking in terms of uh, uh, consistency. Mm -hmm. So consistent habits, when you think of consistency, we think, well, we've got to uh, you know, have our devotions daily. Well, you do. You don't do your devotions because you have to. You do your devotions because you love to. Yeah. And, and that's, a, uh, that's a big difference. Yeah. And when we start looking at life as a love response... Uh, the way we approach life shifts. Yeah. And so 
so you'll be talking about the idea of consistency. Yeah. Could you talk a yeah. little bit about that? So when we're talking about consistency, what, what we've noticed is when we're not in God's word, so many things get impacted, so many things get challenged in our life. Now, I've been married for four years, and a, a couple years ago, me and my wife went to marriage counseling because we had our first kid. I had just changed jobs and, and stepped into my first pastoral role, and it was a lot of shifts all at once. Well, we weren't consistent in our personal walks because a lot of small things happen, but in counseling, what we realized is we have the time, we can make it happen, but we just need to want to make it happen. You know, God's not there lording it over us that we're not, but instead there are things in our life, patterns, sinful habits that just get exposed when we're not in God's right. word. And this is where recovery helps. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and uh, you know, recovery has a bad uh, connotation to that. It does, word because yeah. Because we think, oh my gosh, alcohols and yeah. alcoholics and sex addicts and all those we kinds of things. We think of the worst sins. The, the worst sins. Yeah. Uh, we, we have not developed this, but we, we use the watermark resource called regeneration. And when we think about regeneration, what we have to realize is that, that we are all have fallen. Yeah. And we have a fallen nature within us. Yeah. And, and this fallen nature needs to be regenerated yeah. by the washing of the Word and the Holy Spirit, as Titus um, 3, 5 says. Yeah. And so as the grace of God appears, it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and yeah. yes to the things of God by the washing of rebirth. Mm -hmm. And so that's the word picture of regeneration. And so uh, as, as we walk through this idea of regeneration, we start realizing uh, our hurts, our habits, and our hang-ups. And we mm -hmm. start recognizing how we respond and our poor responses. So, mm -hmm. so that's another valuable breakout uh, to attend. Yeah. And then we have Joel Williams doing a breakout on the church and missions. Yeah, yeah. And pray for Joel Williams right now. He's uh, recovering from, from surgery for kidney stones and and pray that, that he's full health and he can be there. Right, yeah. right. Uh, because I don't want to be pinch, pinch hitting if, if yeah. uh, Brother Joe doesn't show up. <laughs> I'll stick you up there. So, uh, but but anyway, so uh, yeah, pray for Joe, and he's going to do that breakout. Because sometimes we think of missions only in terms of overseas commitments. Yeah, uh, there's a mission all around us. Our mission field is where we work, right. where we're personally invested and, in and, our families. And with the diaspora that that is occurring in the world today, mm. all these unreached people groups. A large percentage of them, uh, God is bringing to America. Mm. And so if we are alert, we will be alert to reach out to them. Yeah. And uh, so if you don't want to go to a, a foreign country, uh, you can just minister in America to yeah. unreached people groups. You, you just got to do your homework and find out where they are at. It's very true, and there's lots of opportunities. And again, Next Step Conference, January 25th, our goal is to equip you as the body of believers to see the value of the local church where you are, not so you can come to Bethel or anything like that. We want you to come, be equipped, and go back to your home church and make a difference. Eric, is there anything that you want to say in our last couple of seconds? You know, we, we really want, want to encourage you to come. It's only $20, $25, depending mm -hmm. on when you register. Uh, I, I think you'll be blessed and yeah. you'll go back to your home church community, community of faith, energized to make a difference in your church yeah. and in the community of El Paso. Yeah. Because we want to see the face of El Paso change. Yeah. We want to see revival in our city. And so revival starts with the household of God. And if everybody, if every church was filled to ca capacity, we would Running still need... Running two and three. Uh, yeah, we yeah, would still need yeah. more and more room and more people doing discipleship. But that's the prayer. That's the goal for the city of El Paso. Now, I want to thank you for joining us. Join us again next Wednesday on United with Christ. We'll see you soon. God bless. God bless.